Our next electricity video is going to be talking about the resistance inside a wire itself. Okay, and we saw that normally wires have very low resistance, which generates a huge amount of current when attached to a potential difference. But different wires have a different amount of resistance, and that's based on the idea of resistivity. And the best way to think about this is, well, if electrical wires are analogous to water pipes, which of the following would have more resistance? If you think about it, a thicker wire with a larger cross-sectional area would allow for the passage of more electrons to squeeze through all those protons, all those atoms, than a smaller cross-sectional area. So we know that cross-sectional area has something to do with resistance. In fact, the thicker and thicker and thicker the wire, the less the resistance is. So that's just one of the factors. Another factor, of course, is something called resistivity and the length of the wire itself. The formula is R equals to rho L over A. R stands for resistance. Rho stands for resistivity. L is the length of the wire, and A is the cross-sectional area. The unit for resistivity is ohm meters. And notice that it's the same exact symbol that we use for density, actually. That's because resistivity is also, just like density, an innate characteristic of the material itself. Just like with density, it doesn't matter how much copper you have, whether it's a huge amount or a small amount, density of the copper will always stay the same. So same thing with copper wire. Uh, no matter how long or how thick the copper wire might be, it has some sort of innate characteristic called resistivity that determines how much resistance that wire is going to produce. And we'll practice that in a moment. But there are a couple of things I just want to show you, especially with this demonstration over here. We have the formula R equals rho L over A. So the most common type of problem with AP physics is they want you to understand how do the different factors affect resistance? So in the end, if I increase the resistivity, you can see that I'm increasing the resistance of the wire. If I increase the length, you can see that the electrons over here would normally have more, elect more protons to squeeze through as they're going by. So increasing the length also increases the resistance. But if I increase the cross-sectional area, just like as I said before, there's now more room for multiple streams of electrons to squeeze through. Okay? So the greater the area, the smaller the resistance and the more current we would produce. Okay. So let's take a look at a couple other factors that also affect resistance. Stretching and temperature change. And to better understand how stretching might affect the wire, take a look at this video. Where we have two people chewing gum. And pause it for a second. Keep in mind, okay, as the gum actually gets stretched out, what happens to the thickness of the gum as it gets longer and longer and longer? It's becoming extremely thin. Now, that was kind of icky, but <laughs> also with cold wires versus warm wires, okay? Understand that all solids are normally vibrating. Something that's warm, the molecules are actually vibrating faster, so it's harder for the electrons to squeeze through when the temperature is increased. So if we have to write that down now. Okay, so the temperature change, the resistance 
is directly related to the temperature, meaning that if when a light bulb actually heats up, when it's giving off more and more light, it's actually increasing the resistance of the filament itself. Okay, so resistance increases the temperature. Even if I were to just to hold the wire in my hand, my own body temperature would increase the resistance of the wire. Resistance is directly related to temperature. You don't have to know the formula for it, but you just have to know the relationship. Now, stretching. When the when the gum got stretched out to twice its length, it became thinner. So understand that if I have, let's say, twice the length, I automatically also have one half the area. So according to the formula, R equals to rho L over A. If I actually stretched it to twice its length and half the area, I would end up with four times as much resistance as before. So it's not the same as just doubling the length. Whenever you stretch something, you're also inversely affecting the cross-sectional area itself. Okay. And let's do this quick practice question over here. Suppose you want to connect your stereo to a remote speaker. If your wire must be 20 meters long, so length is 20 meters, they ask what diameter copper wire should we use? They're so looking for diameter, so really we need the area. And they mention that's copper. In your textbook, it states that copper has a resistivity of 1.72 times 10 to negative 8 ohm meters, and they want the resistance to equal to 0 0.1 ohms. So because we're looking for diameter, really what they're asking us to solve for is the area first. So we would use the formula R is equal to rho L over A. In this case, if we switch it, A is equal to rho L over R. So if we plug in our numbers, we end up with 1.72 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meters times 20 meters divided by the resistance of 0 0.1 ohms. And we end up with an area equaling to 3.44 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared. Now, but we're not looking for the area, we're looking for the diameter, so we have to figure out what the radius is, so we can set that equal to pi r squared, so we divide by pi square root, and we get the radius would equal to 0 0.00105 meters, times 2 would equal to the diameter, in this case, okay? In number five over here, they they ask us to determine the re electrical resistance again. Okay, so we'll do one more practice problem. R is equal to rho L over A. They state that the resistivity is 5.6 times 10 to negative 8 ohm meters times 20 meters in length divided by the area. So in this case, they give us the radius to be 0.2 millimeters. So it's going to be pi times 0.2 times 10 to the negative third meters squared, which equals to 8.91 ohms. Now, if the temperature doesn't change and they stretch it to three times the length, okay? So now the thing is, if I'm stretching it to three times the length, this ends up being just a multiplier question. So if I have three times the length, that means I end up with one-third the area of the four, which means they're going to have nine times as much resistance. So now the new resistance is going to equal to 80.21 ohms. 